Hi guys, this is Weasel for PokerBrainiacs.com. We are going to be discussing the concept of implied odds. What are implied odds? They are a revised estimate of our pot odds, taking into account villain's entire stack size. And it allows us to make calls without sufficient direct pot odds because we are taking into account the chips villain has behind and therefore the pot size is larger and we can find ourselves in situations where realistically we have better pot odds in general. As we will go on to see these are an estimate based on villain's range and we will see some of the situations involved on whether it's likely we make some of that money that villain has behind in a stack or whether it is unlikely. The key is to understand that it is an estimate. There are perhaps two methods for calculating implied odds and we are going to briefly consider both. The first method is that you simply take villains total stack as the amount in the pot. You are pretty much assuming that anything that villain has in his stack that you are going to be able to win. Let's look at an example. There are 100 chips in the pot and villain bets 100. Villain however has a remaining 200 chips still in his stack after he's made this bet. If you've seen the video on pot odds, and if you haven't, it's highly recommended that you watch that video first. I discuss briefly that there are two different methods you can use. There is a ratio method and a fraction method, and we are going to briefly look how we will calculate the required equity in this particular spot. We know that normally with villain betting pot size that we are getting 2 to 1 odds as a ratio and therefore we'd need 33% equity to call but if we take into account that villain has 200 chips behind and that we will win these on a later street if we do hit our hand then we can now calculate a revised estimate of the equity that we need in order to make a call. With the ratio method we first express hero's call as a ratio to the total pot size and the total pot size is villain's bet 100 chips in the pot and the remaining 200 chips behind and we express this as 400 to 100 or a 4 to 1 ratio and we can therefore then convert this into the percentage 20% and if you are unsure at how I arrived at this percentage please check out the video on pot odds. Let's look at the fractional method and the difference with the fractional method is that we include hero's potential call in the total pot size so rather than there being a 400 total pot there is actually a 500 total pot because hero is putting in 100 chips. We then express hero's call amount as a fraction over the total pot size 100 over 500, 1 in 5, equates to 20% equity is required in order to make this call. Therefore, Hero needs to hit his draw 20% of the time in order for this to be profitable. The problem with this method is that it assumes Hero can make the full amount on the river and you may need to adjust your total pot size accordingly. For example, let's say that we think villain is tight and our estimate suggests that he's only going to put in another 50 chips on a later street. We basically just need to adjust our calculation so that this total pot size is not 400 but for example 250. and we can then get a new version of the percentage of equity required. You basically just need to adjust the total pot depending on your estimate of how many chips villain will put in on a later street. 
and as for making reliable estimates we will consider briefly um, towards the end of the video ways in which we can estimate how likely it is that Villain is going to put more chips into the pot. Before that however we are going to consider the second method of calculating implied odds and the way we do this is first we calculate how much we need to make on the river and then afterwards we decide if this is possible and if we think it's possible we can then make the call. Let's look at the, a very similar example, in fact the same example but considered in a slightly reversed manner. The pot size is 100, villain bets 100. As said, hero is getting 2 to 1 odds, or 1 over 3 if you want to express that as a fraction. And therefore he requires 33% equity to make the call. However, hero has calculated what he considers his hand equity to be, and he has 20% chance of perhaps hitting his draw. The question is, how big would the pot need to be for this to be a profitable call based on pot odds alone? Well, Hero's call, if he has 20% equity, needs to be equivalent to 20% of the total pot. Therefore, the call of 100 that Hero needs to call is 20% of how big the pot would need to be. And in order to get 100% from 20%, we multiply 20% by 5. So we also are going to take Hero's call size, which is 100, and multiply that by 5 to give us 500. So we know the needed total pot, and we also know the actual total pot. Uh, we want to include Hero's call in this. And the difference between these two numbers, 500 minus 300, equals 200. And therefore, we know that we need to make an extra 200 chips on the river or, or on a later street for this to be profitable. And this is actually using the fraction method to calculate this because we are including Hero's call. If you we were using the ratio method, you would end up multiplying Hero's call by 4 because we'd be using the ratio of 4 to 1, but we'd also be subtracting a small amount because we would not be including Hero's call in the total pot. So we'd end up with the sum 400 minus 200, but we end up with the same end result. But since we've already converted or we already have access to a percentage, it seems to make sense to use this method 500 minus 300 equals 200, but you can use either. Hero would therefore need to make 200 on a later street, at which point Hero can think to himself, is it realistic that I can make this amount on a later street? Will Villain put that amount into the pot? But how do we establish whether Villain will put those chips into the pot on a later street? How do we know if making the amount we need is possible? There are a number of factors. The first is Villain's hand strength, or the strength of Villain's range, since obviously you won't know Villain's exact hand strength. If we suspect Villain is strong, perhaps he has a set or some other type of strong made hand, perhaps top pair, top kicker, then it's less likely he is going to fold when you do hit your strong draw on a later street. However, if we suspect that villain's range is weak and that perhaps even some of the time he is bluffing, then when we do hit our hand, perhaps villain is just going to check fold and therefore we don't make any more money when we hit our draw. And in that particular situation, we don't have good implied odds. So we have good implied odds if we suspect villain is strong, but we have poor implied odds if we suspect that villain is weak. Also, how aggressive is villain? For example, I say if villain is bluffing, perhaps 
we are not going to make much with our jaw. But what if the villain is the type who will just multi-barrel three streets with a pure bluff? Perhaps we also still have good implied odds, despite the fact that villain's hand range is weak. If villain is the type of player that is just going to check fold when he doesn't have a hand, then we don't have good implied. But if villain is the type that can aggressively multi-barrel some of his draws and semi-draws, obviously our implied odds will go up because we can just cool down with our strong draws. Also, how bad is Villain? Perhaps Villain doesn't have a strong hand at all. Perhaps Villain has a weak one pair hand. But if Villain is not good enough to know, he should be perhaps folding that hand to a lot of aggression. Or perhaps Villain is just curious and is a recreational player and just wants to see what you have. Then this is obviously good for your implied odds as well. Especially if Villain can start making some very thin cooldowns. Perhaps Villain doesn't even need to have a strong hand for you to have good implied odds. If Villain turns out to be a total calling station. Whereas against a good regular, they are going to understand a lot more often situations where turn and river cards do actually improve your range. And therefore you are likely to have a strong made hand. Therefore, if Villain is competent, he is going to find spots to fold, perhaps even quite strong hands that are behind your range. So against a bad Villain, perhaps a Calling Station or a high progressive Maniac, you have very good implied odds. Against a competent regular, your implied odds aren't as good because that Villain is going to be able to find some folds in some good situations. How deceptive is our made hand when we hit? Some hands are naturally more deceptive than others. Certain things such as making a flush when that third card to a flush hits a board. Or perhaps we even have a one card flush and there are four to a flush out there on the board. These kind of hands can often be quite obvious when we hit. Other hands, however, things like gut shots, are often very concealed. It's not always obvious when someone has hit a gut shot because just because a card comes which completes some possible gut shots, those specific hands which make those gut shots actually constitute a very small part of your range for perhaps making some calls on the turn and flop. So not only does Villain think it's unlikely that you should have those hands, but Theoretically, in terms of ranges, he should assume that you don't have those hands very often. Therefore, he's much less likely to fold to aggression because perhaps he thinks your range consists more of bluffs. So the more deceptive our hand, the better implied odds we have. If our hand is very face up, then villain can perhaps make some correct folds and our implied odds aren't as good. How deep is Villain's stack? To put it simply, the deeper someone's stack is, the better your implied odds. Because the more money you can potentially make on a later street. And it may sound obvious, but if Villain does not even have in his stack the amount you need to make, then you are never going to have sufficient implied odds. For example, in the example we looked at, we needed to make 200 chips on the river. If Villain only has 150 chips in his stack, it doesn't matter how well you play, you are not going to make it profitable by virtue of implied odds because Villain's stack is simply not deep enough. Whereas if Villain has a super deep stack and you are drawing to um, a nut type hand, then your implied odds go up because who knows how much villain could put in on a later street, especially if he's deep stacked and also bad. You can end up in situations where you have really fantastic implied odds. It's important to understand that when we talk about the amount we need to make on the river, that it's an average. Just because you can make a certain amount on the river, that doesn't mean that you will make that amount on average. 
For example, if we need to make 200 chips, perhaps we will make 400 some of the time, perhaps other, th other times we won't make any chips on a later street, but on average we will make 200 chips. So that's the important thing, not how much you can make or can possibly make, but how much you will make on average is what is important because it's that which will decide whether it's a winning play in the long run or not. The final thing is that we will make more on average with nut type hands, for example, ace high draws, maybe top full houses. And the reason is obviously if we are going to make a strong hand, perhaps we make a queen high flush and then we end up losing to an ace high flush. This all detracts from the average amount we can make on a later street because if some of the time we make 400 but some of the time we lose 400 then perhaps our average is going to be zero. Basically any time you have a hand which is a non-nutted hand, perhaps you were drawing to something like a queen high flush that isn't the nuts, any time you have such a hand, then you suffer from what is known as reverse implied odds. And in general, we want to, as much as possible, only be drawing to hands which are the nuts, or at least very close to the nuts. And while we can still draw to other non-nutted type hands, we just need to be aware of the fact that we are going to make less on average on later streets and that our implied odds aren't as good and for more information about reverse implied odds check out the video on reverse implied odds I hope this has given you a slightly better understanding of implied odds and how to use them this has been Weasel for PokerBrainiacs.com thanks for watching